Stop, dude! You're ruining my shot! <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet, promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. That's right, we on Google, that's right, we on Urban Dictionary. <laughs> We're doing the thing all over the place. Today, I would like to jump into r slash Tales of Neckbeards once more. To continue the Jerry saga. Yes, indeed. We had parts one and two in the gatekeeping dad video. Gatekeeping neckbeard anime dad. Something like that. <laughs> the link's in the description if you want to check it out. It is a real show. <laughs> in the truest sense of the term. So we're going to be revisiting Jerry. Hopefully having some laughs with user KingCJ24. And... I'm so glad that he was able to write these tales down. It sort of looks like these might be the last couple of tales, so we might be wrapping this uh, short saga up. Little four-part saga. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We don't want to overdo it or nothing like that. So if you got more after this video, think of something different, then I'd, I'd be glad to cover them. But as it stands, it does look like we're going to be wrapping it up. Also, thank you guys so much for 7,000 subscribers. Jesus, the momentum behind this channel is just madness. And the fact that we're having all these neckbeard stories just basically fall into my lap is amazing. We had a couple of months where nothing was coming out basically. And now I've got my own subreddit. People in the community are submitting their stuff. And it's just a really good feel to have so much stuff that needs to be covered. So I'm never lacking for content, I'll tell you that much. And I definitely have you guys to thank for it. So thank you so much for making me your neckbeard king. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way. And then we will jump right into some cringy tales of neckbeards. Jerry, part three. War of love. Oh, no. <laughs> Greetings, readers. It is I, CJ, your not-so-humble narrator. Today, I'm here to relive my cringe for your enjoyment. Trying to write this story made me cringe so hard that it was hard to actually finish writing it, but nonetheless, it is my duty to cringe for your enjoyment. <laughs> we have two new characters to introduce today as well. Dante, 21-year-old co-worker, 6'6", 200 pounds, plays basketball at the local university. Dang, that's a big boy. <laughs> and I love that his name is Dante. I'm not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> if you get that reference, then uh, props. Allie, 19-year-old co-worker and Dante's girlfriend. 5'4", about 130, and also likes anime. There's a lot of fine-looking women in the world, dude, but not all of them will bring you lasagna at work. Ooh, that's the same reference from before. <laughs> so this story starts about three weeks into working. The job was a local farm that had turned itself into a restaurant slash ice cream shop slash mini golf slash driving range. Wow. What? <laughs> this seems like quite a bit of business diversity there. It's called Young's Jersey Dairy. It's honestly an enjoyable place. Great food, homemade ice cream, and golf. Mmm. When I visit Ohio, I make sure to eat there. But enough about the job. Back to the cringe. Zoe and I were walking to the break room for lunch, and there we spotted Jerry. He had a McDonald's bag with four sandwiches in it and two wrappers on the table. OP, hey, what are you eating? Jerry, I'm making me- Oh yeah, bro. Top tier. For those of you who don't know what a Mc is, it's when you combine a McDouble and a McChicken. I had one before, but it is extremely greasy, yet somehow tasty. <laughs> this dude was about to eat three more of them. Oh God, that's a heart attack waiting to happen. I eat one, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Zoe, that looks gross. Jerry, try one. We could eat lunch together, Zoe. <laughs> Zoe, uh, no thanks. I can feel my arteries clogging from here. Jerry, Ugh, well, that's fine, but are you busy after work? Zoe, no, why? 
Oops. <laughs> That's a mistake. Just always say you're busy. That's the best form of defense. <laughs> Jerry. My car is finally out of the shop today, so let's go out somewhere. Zoe. Uh, no. <laughs> Jerry. Why not? Zoe. I don't want to go out with you. Jerry. Fine, then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely shocked that he actually had a car. I thought that whole thing was a lie. We both sit down and start eating. During this time, I bring up that there's an anime convention coming into town soon, and she starts nerding out and mentions how she used to cosplay. Jerry, of course, butts in. Did you say you cosplay? Zoe. Yeah, I have a little bit. My most recent one was Zoe from Fortnite. She shows us pictures of her costume, and it was really good. Jerry. Oh, can you get any more perfect? <laughs> I cringe. Zoe probably cringes. The whole world is cringing along with us at this point. <laughs> Zoe, what are you talking about, Jerry? You like anime, cosplay, and you like sushi. You are literally the perfect woman. Zoe just sat there and stared at him. <laughs> I mean, how do you come up with a response to that? <laughs> just say no again, I guess. No. <laughs> Jerry. We could be the perfect couple. You would be the Chi-Chi to my Goku. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that is good cringe. I cringe even harder now. <laughs> the Chi Chi to my Goku. Oh boy. I don't think that's ever gonna work. Even if you met a girl who's like the biggest fan of Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> that is a cringe line. Zoe just says, Um, Jerry. Full family cosplay pictures. You, me, and, and two kids. <laughs> I begin to cringe so hard that I somehow can't form the words to just tell him to stop. <laughs> Zoe, I, um, Jerry. It's okay. You don't have to say a word. I already know how you feel. Your feelings are well known. <laughs> I think the cringe went full circle because I could finally form the words. OP, dude, stop, please. <laughs> Jerry stared at me angrily. Don't butt in. Zoe, please stop. <laughs> Jerry, fine. Until next time, Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. The cringe was bad, but then he brings up the two kids that don't exist. <laughs> it's like, oh God. What are you doing, Jerry? Please. He gets up and storms out of the room to head back to work. Now, I had not told Zoe about what Jerry thought about their hug. Why? Because I didn't think it would be a problem. Why would you think that it wouldn't be a problem, OP? <laughs> but it was clear that she didn't know what she had unleashed upon herself. So the shift goes by, and afterwards, Zoe is talking with Allie in the parking lot, so I decide to talk to them for a while until my brother comes. He needed my car that day and had driven me to work. OP, hey, what you guys up to? Zoe, sounding nervous. Oh, um, nothing, just, you know, talking. Allie, trying to whisper to Zoe. Go on, do it. Zoe, walking up to me. CJ, do you like sushi? OP, never tried it. Why? What do you mean, why? You know why, bro. <laughs> Zoe, well, I was wondering if maybe we could get some sushi together this weekend? OP, yeah, I'd, I'd love to give it a try. Should be fun. Anyone else going to be there? Zoe, I was hoping it could be a date. Now, as I said before, Zoe was really attractive, and the thought of her asking me out caught me completely off guard. OP, I didn't know you felt that way. Sure, let's do it. Zoe, sounds great. I'll text you the time. My brother pulls up, and I leave. The next day I get called into work, and so does Zoe, but Jerry doesn't have work today, so we thought that we had a little break from him. So we're taking orders in the front and just chatting about random stuff, but then 
In walks Jerry with flowers in his fat, meaty hands. <laughs> He's clearly tried to dress up for the occasion. Black suit jacket with black pants and a black undershirt topped off with what else? A black fedora. He at least had some common sense, so he didn't come in smelling like his normal soup, but instead like half a can of Axe body spray. <laughs> Which is only slightly more pleasant. Right beside me, Zoe says, Oh, please, no, please don't. He approaches the counter. Jerry, Hello, Zoe. <laughs> My, you look lovely today. OP, Hey, Jerry. I see you showered today. Jerry, Shut up! Anyway, Zoe, these are for you. And he gives her the flowers. Zoe, oh, thanks. Well, what can I get you? Jerry, how about some chicken tenders? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it always chicken tenders with neckbeards, bro? <laughs> there are other foods in the world. <laughs> Maybe try some out. And of course, with a side of your phone number. <laughs> uh, it's only slightly better than the Chi Chi to my Goku line. <laughs> but still pretty damn cringe. OP, lame dude. <laughs> Jerry, stop dude, you're ruining my shot. <laughs> Jerry, anyway. Zoe, I was thinking we could go out this Saturday. I could treat you to some sushi. Zoe, well, I'm already going out with CJ that day. Sorry. Jerry, looking at me. Dude, I thought I told you to stay away from her. Zoe, excuse me? OP, yeah, this guy thinks you're his woman or something. I don't know. Jerry, all I wanted you to do was stay away, and you asked her out, dude. Dick move. Zoe, I asked CJ out, and I've already told you no multiple times. Jerry, but I don't get it. Why do you want to go out with him and not me? Zoe, well, you called me sick, and you like Trump. Maybe those are the reasons. And you don't have a car. Jerry, it's because he's black, isn't it? You just have a thing for black guys. <laughs> Zoe, excuse me? Allie cuts in. Dude, she said no. Leave it alone. Jerry, what does it matter to you anyway? Allie, it's just decency. Now please, leave it alone. Jerry, stay out of my business, you f Dante, hey! Watch how you talk to her. Jerry, what's it to you? Dante, she's my girlfriend, so it matters. Now calm down. Jerry, so you both like black guys, Dad. <laughs> what is the deal? I see how it is. Zoe, one day I will free you from his spell and make you mine. <laughs> huh? OP, dude, please stop. I just physically cannot cringe anymore. Jerry, you won't keep her under your spell forever. Eventually, I will win her. <laughs> Zoe, no, you won't. Jerry, until then, I, your shining knight, will be off until the day I can rescue you from this beast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he actually said this. I wish that I was joking. He then tips his fedora, again, not joking, <laughs> and tries to turn and strut out like a true gentleman. We then all begin laughing out of control until the boss has to come and tell us to stop. The date goes very well. We have a great time and she asked me to be her boyfriend. But yeah, that does it for this story. Hope y'all enjoyed. Next time, Jerry decides to play some video games and gets bolder in his attempts to reclaim his fair maiden. As always, I'm looking for your feedback in the comments section below, and big ups to the amazing Red X, hey, and his outstanding neckbeard voice for reading this story. Until next time, dear readers. See, the strangest part of uh, neckbeards in general <laughs> is that they just can't put two and two together 
and realize why they aren't successful. Like, if you're looking to meet women, then you just want to treat them like people, you know? You don't want to come at it like there's some fair maiden and you're a knight in shining armor. That's, that's... <laughs> I think I said in the last video, like, neckbeards swear they're living in the renaissance or something like that. Honestly, OP doesn't seem like anything exceedingly special, but he is able to treat Zoe like a human being, which Jerry seems basically incapable of doing. That is the main difference that I'm seeing. The fact that he dragged him being a black guy into the conversation is just a way of, like, protecting his ego, you know what I mean? He can't look inwardly enough to see the differences in their personality, so instead he's like, oh yeah, it must be because they're black. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Some people do have, like, a racial preference, and I guess that's fine too, but I don't get that vibe necessarily from this story. Jerry was just, like, steadily upping the cringe, and he definitely made a bad situation just worse by dragging race into it. The only other thing that he could have said was, like, referring to the spell as voodoo magic or something. <laughs> there is no spell. There is no witchcraft. There is no warlock mate bond. <laughs> it's just two humans that want to hang out together on a long-term basis. And again, I'm, I'm consistently surprised by how much these beards will believe in spells and shit. The level of disconnect is just so severe, dude. And <laughs> that's one of the reasons that I love reading beard stories so much. It is just cringe upon cringe. And I can't get enough. So we're going to jump into part four. And hopefully cringe just a little bit more today. Let's do it. Jerry part four. Desperation. Greetings, readers. It is I, CJ, your not-so-humble narrator. Our story today is the start of the downward spiral from funny cringe to outright desperation. Looking back, I should have just quit because at this point, I had all the money that I needed. Wow. <laughs> How's that work? <laughs> Don't you, like, consistently need money? If you remember in the first story, I think OP was saving for school or something like that. But come on, more money's never a bad thing, which I guess is why OP didn't quit. So, preach into the choir. <laughs> but hindsight is always 2020, and we have cringe to endure. So, let's get into it. Characters are the same as in the last story. This story begins about three weeks after Jerry swore, I would regret taking his chosen woman. This story does not take place at work, but at a party that our boss was throwing for everyone on the shift. Ugh, work party. <laughs> Do not like. By this point, me and Zoe were officially dating and having a great time together. So, Zoe, Allie, and Dante all head to the party which is being held at boss's house. It was pretty nice. We played Fortnite and had some random anime playing until the new episodes of Dragon Ball Super came on that night. To the best of my knowledge, Boss did not invite Jerry to the party, so we were having a good time. And then Jerry arrives at the front door, dressed in a true gamer <laughs> t-shirt and cargo shorts. He also had fingerless gloves on. No slip grips, you could play that Smash Brothers to your heart's content. <laughs> Wouldn't it be like highly illegal to have a work party and not invite one of the workers? Or is this just one of those things that that's frowned upon? Or you don't officially call it a work party, and then it's fine, right? That's what makes work parties so terrible, is that you have to see all the people that you already see, <laughs> and slightly hate. <laughs> I can't stand it. I've been to a couple, and, and it's always awful. Anyways, Jerry says, Hey guys, I'm here for the party. OP, who invited you? Jerry, it was for the entire shift, and uh... I work on the shift. OP to boss. I thought you didn't invite him. Boss. I didn't. He must have found out some other way. OP. Damn. Jerry. Where's Zoe? <laughs> OP. Why? Jerry. I need to see her. He sees Zoe walking and instantly speed walks over to her. Jerry. <laughs> Hello there. Fancy meeting you here. Zoe, what do you want, Jerry? Jerry, I, I brought you something, Zoe. 
He pulls a two liter bottle of Mountain Dew out from his bag. <laughs> I instantly take out the bottle to inspect it, and the bottle had been opened. Jerry, dude, what the fuck? OP, like I'm gonna let you give my girlfriend anything. Plus the bottle was open. Jerry, well, I was thirsty. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's better than what I initially thought that he had like slipped a roofie into it or something, I guess. Zoe, and you don't see a problem with giving me something that your disgusting lips touched? Jerry, well, you kiss CJ all the time. What about his lips? OP taunting Jerry. Oh yeah, she loves my lips. And she likes how I use them. <laughs> Zoe catching my drift. Oh yeah, I, I can't get enough. She pulls me in and starts kissing me. Jerry manages to pull us apart before we start to really get going. And he is red with anger. That's about the point where you spin around and punch him right in the mouth. <laughs> Touch me? That That's fighting right now. Jerry... What are you doing, you pig? You need to ask her before you kiss her. Don't you know how to treat a lady? OP, uh, she pulled me in. Zoe, CJ, can I kiss you? OP, yes you can. <laughs> we start kissing again and Jerry just decides to leave this time. We start playing Fortnite on Boss's PlayStation and all goes well until Zoe decides to play. Zoe plays a couple of rounds and is shockingly good. I'm talking launch padding into fights, hitting a ton of crazy snipes. I mean, this girl was actually legitimately good. You seem surprised by that. <laughs> then, just when I was about to take my turn, Jerry decides to step in. Jerry, stand aside. It's time for a real man to play. Watch this, Zoe. He sits down in the chair, which is clearly too small for his massive ass, <laughs> and he is terrible. I'm talking worse than me. He didn't know how to build or shoot. He was just absolutely awful, and he was getting angrier and angrier with each death. <laughs> you guys let him play for multiple rounds? I'd be like, you died on the drop? I guess that sucks, but <laughs> my turn. Jerry, this Wi-Fi is... I can't play like this. OP, dude, you just suck. It isn't the Wi-Fi. Jerry turning red. Shut up, asshole. Dante, chill out, dude. You don't want to sh your pants again. <laughs> Everyone starts laughing hysterically, and Jerry is getting upset. Jerry, you guys. Uh... He storms off in the back, and this time Zoe does not go to comfort him. <laughs> Ah, oh, we're learning. <laughs> then the new episode of Dragon Ball Super finally comes out, and we all start watching. Everything goes well, until I get up to head to the table to grab a drink. Jerry stops me, right by where Boss has his PlayStation set up. Jerry, I don't know why you're trying to make me look like a fool in front of Zoe, but it stops here. <laughs> OP, uh, you do a good enough job of making a fool of yourself, dude. Jerry, you think I'm playing, but you don't deserve her. You don't know how to treat a lady. <laughs> OP, I'm not listening to this, dude. I'm gonna go back to what you wish you had. That comment must have pushed him over the edge, because once I turned my back, he pushed me. Now I was off balance, so it was easy for this blubber ball to push me over, but... I didn't fall, just a stumble, and I stumbled right into Boss's projector and knocked it off the stand. It broke. Party's over. <laughs> I was pissed and about ready to hit him. Zoe sees this and grabs my arm before I can do anything. Boss, what the hell happened? <laughs> OP, this asshole pushed me into your projector. Jerry, he stole my love <laughs> and teased me about it. Zoe, you're what? Jerry, Zoe, you're the one I want. You're the one I need. I can't ever stop thinking about you. Watching you with this asshole just kills me inside. I know he mistreats you, and I don't know why you think you love him. And I don't even know what you see in him because I'm three times the man that he is. 
One day, I'll free you from his dark spell. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> are we dragging Ray's back into it? I think we are. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll make you realize what you truly want. One day, I... OP, please stop, dude. <laughs> I can't take any more. Jerry. Zoe, I love you. Zoe is turning red at this point, and I am feeling the secondhand embarrassment. I'm sure everyone in the room feels the exact same way. Jerry. Zoe, please. I need you. Boss. Dude, leave now. Jerry. Not without Zoe. She doesn't need him. OP about ready to hit Jerry. You have two options. You can either get out or be thrown out. Jerry. Like you could. Me and Dante start walking up closer to him at this point, both ready to basically just beat his ass. He gets scared and leaves. Zoe storms out to her car and I run after her. She ends up just sitting in her car because all that was just too much to handle. She was livid at this guy and felt bad for causing this entire mess. I tell her it's really not her fault. She can't help being attractive. Jerry is at fault here. Allie and Dante follow us out eventually to make sure we're okay. After talking for a while, we all just decide to get some ice cream and call it a night. Zoe lets me stay at her place for the night because her parents were out of town. Assume what you will. Yeah, bro. I assume you watch Golden Girls and ate more ice cream and played footsie under the sleeping bag. <laughs> That's how it went. After that, I thought Jerry would be fired for sure. But boss tells us that he can't have him fired for something that happened outside of work. And being so understaffed means that Jerry would need to do a lot more than that to lose his job. So he just changes the schedule around so Zoe and I see Jerry as little as possible. I had hoped that that would be the end of it. And it was at work for the most part. But he would not give up his quest for his chosen milady. And that, readers, is where our story comes to an end. We're nearing the end of Jerry, as there's only one or two more stories that are actually worthy of being told, but this last part to this day still shocks me. As always, I look forward to your feedback in the comments section, and I hope you enjoyed the story. Until next time, readers. I just don't understand what goes on in the neckbeard's mind, that they just can't accept the word no. Like, does he actually think she's gonna be like, you know what, you're talking some real sense there, Let let's get out of this party. <laughs> like... <laughs> Never in life, bro. I guess the one and only real true secret is to start speaking their language. You gotta challenge him to a duel by the pond at dawn. All a pajama beard. <laughs> at least if you think you can take him, you know what I mean? This is like definitely some, some red flag territory. Massive red flag territory. And I hope that we're not going to see something uh, far worse because neckbeards, when they are driven to the point of desperation, are really capable of anything. You know what I mean? We all sit around and laugh and go, ah, look how fat and desperate that he is. And then he buys a handgun and shoots OP. You know what I mean? <laughs> Obviously, that, that didn't happen. I'm pretty sure so I can make a joke about it, but... <laughs> It's not outside the realm of possibility. So situations like this should definitely be taken seriously, especially if you see the extent that he's willing to take it to. Like, this is beyond unacceptable. At this point, I, I think kicking his ass would be a mercy. <laughs> oh, but I suppose we'll revisit Jerry when the other parts are posted and I'm looking quite forward to it. If you guys did enjoy the video, I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe, maybe share it around, or the first part, which is in the description, if you'd like to. Check out the links in the description as well. There's my Amazon affiliate link, my wifey's channel, Mr. and Mrs. Red X, my personal subreddit, r slash Red X Reads, the Teespring if you're trying to rock the merch. Oh, we got that social medias, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons, which you're seeing on the screen right now, and I'd like to thank them all. But specifically, Zero MMX, Lady Nix, Robert Waits, Pope Squid, Rebecca H, Cider Drinker, Tato Fair, The Last Shinobi, Mark211, Michael Undead, Aaron W, Mitch, John Hero, Candy Sora, DigiNZ, Fire Drake, Little Lone Wolf, Miss Monday, Silent Revolver, JM Coon, Leon Embers, TSM Kirby, Redwind, Synaptic Boomstick, Jerry, Staples, Yeet, and Davindra. Thank you guys so, so much for supporting the channel. Things do get demonetized every once in a while. I'm not sure how this video will go. 
We just got to kind of cross our fingers, hope for the best, brace for impact. <laughs> Obviously, if anybody else can uh, support on the Patreon, help me circumvent some of these demonetized videos, that would be massively appreciated. I do thank you so much in advance. But if you can't right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. Because really, the views is how my beard stays buttered. <laughs> <laughs> In order to join us again, you're going to need to keep yourself safe, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe uh, watch some more Red X videos. Oh, God, that sounds so good. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one. And until then, bye-bye.